Hello, my fellow Americans. Tis I, the Rumpled One. Tuesday, October 16th, the year 2012. Rules for radicals. Basically, Obama's playbook, his handbook. Maybe you could even consider it his Bible. I'm a little over halfway through, and I have learned a lot. I wish I would have read this back in 1971 when it came out. Things are probably a little bit different. Because some of the things I had to learn the hard way were in this book where, just like Robert Greene put in the 48 Laws of Power, you have to appeal to the heart, not the head. Can't go in and use logic and reason. People turn against you. They even use the words hope and change in here. It's very interesting. It really is. It really talks about how the community organizer has to use psychology. Get people to trust them. Get people to like them. Basically manipulate people into thinking your idea was their idea. They say in the beginning you got to take the heat, but in the end you got to let them take the credit. But I don't really think that's what Obama did. No, he points the finger and says it's other people's fault, but when it goes right, then it, it was his doing. He has these lessons in here. about communication for one and he says that out of all the qualities for a good organizer communication is the only one you can't lack and he says communication with others takes place when they understand what you're trying to get across to them if they don't understand then you are not communicating regardless of words pictures or anything else People only understand things in terms of their experience, which means that you must get within their experience. Further, communication is a two-way process. If you try to get your ideas across to others without paying attention to what they have to say to you, you can forget about the whole thing. See, I've always been a stu student of logic. And most of my friends say I would have made a great lawyer because, one, I just beat them to death with logic, and two, I don't give up. I persist. I persevere. But it's just really interesting how this book really lays it out. And I'm kind of jumping around here. He talks about one of the chapters is a word about words. And you have to be real careful what words you use. Because some words have connotations that are actually stronger than the meaning of the word. Words like power. Self-interest. It's interesting. Compromise. Ego. Conflict. What's really interesting is, if you've read Ringer's books, he talks about all of these things. In fact, Ringer was one of the people that points out that this is Obama's handbook or playbook or Bible. But I really think it would behoove you to read this book sometime. I know you only have a couple weeks left before the election, but maybe before the end of the year. Go to the library, get a copy, read it. You'll learn a lot. You'll definitely learn a lot. I'll probably finish it up and do a, a full book review on it. But it's just really, really funny.
they talk about an organizer here and he says his acceptance as an organizer depends on his success in convincing key people and many others first that he is on their side and second that he has ideas and he knows how to fight to change things that he's not one of these guys doing his thing and that he's a winner otherwise who needs him that's that's the change part of the hope and change and you see when you organize you're gonna come across all kind of people smart people people with limited intellect which is another way or a nice way of saying people who are ignorant dumb and stupid and or and you have to work with the whole group I remember once the president of a company I was working for sat me down and told me that I had to learn to work with the uh, bell-shaped curve and what he was trying to say is was that not everybody was as smart as I was and I have to learn to work with people who weren't so and that can be really trying nerve-wracking frustrating etc but he makes this point and you have to I guess you have to have the type of uh, makeup internal makeup that you can basically put up with this nonsense or other people's nonsense you can sit there and listen to them go on and on and on I guess the way you listen to me go on and on and on right yes yeah, I can laugh at myself but to be effective that's what you have to do you go to a public meeting and you speak out if, if the people don't like you they shut down so even if you're right just out of spite they'll shut you down and if you want to go up against the uh, status quo and talk about change people fear change you have to make them comfortable that's that would be your role as an organizer because people think that uh, they fear retribution they got mouths to feed mortgages to pay rent to pay car payments medical bills you know they don't want to rock the boat and lose their job over some ideal over some injustice that you know they'll just turn the other cheek you know they, they'll just keep on keeping on the best they can they're, they're not really wanting to rise up. They don't want to fight the man because the man's got the power. And they're afraid of that power. They're afraid the man might use the power against them. Especially in a small community, small town, you know, a company town where just a handful of people really run the show there. You go up against them, you got problems. Because the sheriff or chief of police, you know, they're all buddies and they just make your life a living hell, run you out of town or worse. But then again, if you can find enough people to go along with you and stand up, that's when you can make a difference. He talks about momentum. Got to get that momentum going. Talks about how to get the momentum going. So once again, I'm not quite finished, but it's definitely a, a good education. So if you've got young children, high school age, I think you might want to, or college age, you might want to let them read this book or encourage them to read it. Might help them in the world. That's what it's all about, because right now, we the people, we need all the help we can get to fight tyranny. Because wake up, America. Smell the tyranny.